we've made it. I've finally got my new golf simulator room built and ready to go. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Handicap Golf YouTube channel. Uh, it's been a while since I've posted any videos. Uh, it's been quite a busy time in my household over the last couple of months. Uh, numerous things going on. But I finally moved into a new house and my project of building a golf simulator room in the garage is finally complete. Um, as you can see from this little time lapse that's going on at the moment, um, this was me building the golf simulator room the other day. Um, a lot of planning went into this, um, but like I said, I've had plenty of time to plan it. I've uh, been getting resources delivered over the last couple of weeks, uh, step by step. I managed to get everything that I needed, and like I say, the other night I finally managed to get it all together and set up and working, which is good news. So, in this video, I'm going to talk you through how I set it up and certain things that I used etc so stay tuned keep watching and I hope that you get some sort of benefit from this and enjoy now let me take you around my new golf simulator setup in the garage of my new house so sorry that the projector light is going to get in my eyes I'll try and stay out of the way of that so here it is Obviously got my laptop over in the corner, impact screen, and I'll take you through the rest of the build as we go along. I just want to say a big thank you to everybody on the Facebook Skytrack users group. Definitely check that out if you're looking to build your own golf simulator. I've learnt loads from everybody who's posted on there, so thank you very much guys. It's much appreciated. I don't know if you can see, but these things on the side are just black curtains mainly for decoration on this left hand side don't tend to shank many over here um, but over on the right hand side over here that's where I get my occasional shank as you'll see there's no protection behind the curtains yeah I could have put some stuff behind there maybe some foam acoustic tiles or something but trying to keep the cost down and to be quite honest the curtains are quite baggy, I got some large ones, I think they were 90 inch drop curtains um, by 60 inches wide and I've put both the curtains up here so I've ended up getting two pairs of the curtains, one for either side um, and because they're quite baggy they actually take a lot of speed out of the ball when the ball hits um, so touch wood, I've not had any holes in my plasterboard wall yet The impact screen I've got is um, a big favour actually from Phil over at Hybrid Me. He sorted me out. I, I dropped him an email and asked him if he got any old um, impact screens available. And he emailed me back dead quick um, and he actually sold me a Type 2 impact screen, which is, as you can see, very high quality. Um, and he sold it me for like 50 quid and it's a massive, massive sheet of impact screen. So I've just had to fold it over. As you could probably see in the time lapse, I was struggling to work out how I was going to do that. It took me quite a while, but we got there in the end, and for 50 quid, that's a top purchase. So thank you, Phil, top man. What I've done is, I don't know if you can see, but I've tarp clipped and carabiner hooked uh, the screen to the wall on that side, and also on this side over here. Exactly the same thing, you might be able to see a bit better. There you go. So it's good with the tarp clips. That was another tip I got off Phil. You can just twist the impact screen in and tighten it up as much as you need to do. Along the top, um, it's actually just uh, wire rope. The way that I've done it is I've used some metal wire or some metal rope, whatever it's called. Connected up here, just a little bracket into the wall. And then you got some tensioning, little tensioning hook tool, and then your metal rope. And that goes all the way across to the other side where it's got the same thing. Now I've also got one B 
behind here and this one is attaching my old archery net so i've kind of got a double impact net going on anybody that's seen my original how to build a diy golf net i actually use metal poles uh, from the metal store to build a proper enclosure um, but on one of my videos on the channel um, I actually explain how the ricochet is just mental um, and yes there are ways that you can sort that ricochet out with like foam insulation and stuff like that but um, I got this tip um, for the metal rope and I wasn't sure how to actually set it up but I did a bit of research obviously online um, and it was dead easy so anyway yeah I've got two ropes um, going across I've got one for an archery screen which is behind this type 2 impact screen for a bit of extra protection and I've got this front one that's obviously got the type 2 impact screen on um, and I've got the it's actually a bed sheet that's up there um, with some foam tiles foam acoustic tiles glued to the ceiling and basically they were like 20 quid off Amazon for 24 um, you had to just glue a bit of cardboard onto the back with some glue spray um, and then get some velcro stick them on your ceiling um, and it looks all right on their own but i think it looks better with that black sheet over the top i've put this black bed sheet over there um, just to make it look a little bit neater um, what's my point the bed sheet actually tucks behind the first wire that i've got what the impact screen's on um, and in between the one where the archery screen is so this is obviously the floor and my hitting mat got the turf from a place called artificial grass direct uh, i'd highly recommend those guys colin and the other guys there sorted me right out i went in i got a four meter off cut and he gave me a really good price they're also online so google artificial grass direct if you're in the uk and check those out it's actually really good quality it's not just some cheap crap it's some decent stuff um, so I got that for like 100 quid my hitting mat is the same hitting mat that I had in my previous video um, that was great because it cost me 12 cans of Stella of course as we go back we've got the trusty Skytrack got a laptop got my phone which I'm recording on I've also got myself an adapter for when I want to use the iPad and I want to plug it into the HDMI in the projector that was like 40 odd quid 40 50 quid from Apple I've been told that they're the best ones to get um, not none of the fakies um, fridge tattered new fridge not very stocked but we've got a few beers in there to get us started the projector was like 30 40 quid off ebay second hand nothing special um got a mirror so i can check my golf swing make sure i'm doing the right things or try to anyway um and of course golf clubs over there in the back so yeah this simulator build is actually in the garage of my new house um, and unfortunately uh, the garage ceiling is pretty damn low um, so it turns out I can only swing comfortably a 7 iron 7 iron, 8 iron, 9 iron, pitching wedge, sand wedge, log wedge and all that um, so of course that's a bit of a downer um, I don't know if you can tell beautiful wall I've not decorated that yet I've not decorated any of it to be fair might stick a TV up there over that white patch um, so I can watch the golf whilst I'm playing that's another idea I got off the uh, Facebook Skytrack users group quality that anyway where was I um, ceilings yeah from floor to ceiling um, it's actually only about seven and a half feet which is poor now I'm only a bit of a midget I'm five foot six um, so yeah as I say I can only swing seven iron and up um, 
I can get away with a six iron just about. I scrape the ceiling. Um, I am looking at getting rid of some of the plasterboard so it gets me a few extra inches. But I have inquired about raising the ceiling um, and that's a no-go apparently because of the, the trusses in the roof. Um, I may be able to get a structural engineer out to have a look at that but it's a new build house and I don't really fancy starting messing with it all. Um, I looked into digging the digging the floor out so I could get a bit of extra height and the site manager said you've got no chance Mitch. Um, I looked at building an actual simulator shed outside but, but I need planning permission to go over two and a half meters high so I look I got a guy to quote me who would dig down into the ground and then I could get a three meter tall shed and that was going to cost thousands just to dig out so yeah I've had to resign myself to a seven iron and up sky track practice in my garage which to be fair I'm sure when it when it comes winter I'm not going to be that bothered um, at least I can play a bit of golf so yeah this is it um, thanks for checking out my new golf simulator room um, hope you like it hope it inspires you guys for some ideas um, like I said check out the Skytrack Facebook users group absolutely top group that for anybody that's looking to buy a Skytrack or anybody that has a Skytrack you can pick up loads of tips from there so cheers for that everybody on there um, and yeah I suppose there's nothing else left to do apart from swing a few clubs there is the story of my golf game. One left, one right, one down the middle. No consistency. Well, one other thing, um, this is centre aligned at the moment, the Skytrack, but I have been using it with an offset, um, so I moved the centre line over. Um, it's quite a handy little tip, especially when you're playing target practice closest to the pit and all that. Um, alignment sticks down, to help with technique, but also to show me where to aim the ball. Um, if anybody's struggling with how to align your sky track, uh, I've actually done another video on how to do that, so check that out on my channel, Handicap Golf. Also, yeah, the um, the indoor swing syndrome is a thing. Um, definitely takes you a while to get used to hitting inside. <laughs>